Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Glad to see everyone here this morning for this hour of worship. And as we begin, would you please turn in your bulletin, stand, and let us join together in a responsive call to worship. Praise God in His mighty firmament. Praise God, God for His mighty deeds. Praise God for His exceeding greatness. Praise, Praise God, God with trumpet sound. Praise God with lute and harp. Praise, Praise God, God with tambourine and dance. Praise God with strings and pipe. Praise, Praise God, God with sounding cymbals. Praise God with loud passion cymbals. Let, Let everything that breathes Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us join together in our opening hymn, hymn number 139. Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Seeing verses 1, 3, and 5. Of the nails in his hands, 
and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My God, my Lord, and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And that though through believing, you may have life in his name. Good morning. Good morning. We've come to our time of prayer and uh, sharing joys and concerns. We certainly wish to remember uh, Joanne Moody and the rest of John's family this morning, um, praying for their travel back home this week and so forth. So it was a difficult day yesterday, but a very good day. Other prayer requests, joyous concerns. Jane Dale's heart surgery went quite well and I guess she's going to get to come home Monday so her valve replacement went better than they thought that was Jane Jane Dale Father, what a joy it is to be with your people in this house of prayer, this house of worship. Lord, this morning we praise you for the, the beauty of this spring morning, the sun and the, the bright blue sky outside, the gentle breeze. Lord, we thank you for this, this season. The, new life and renewal and refreshment, new birth. Lord, we ask this morning that you would, uh, you would uh, take hold in our hearts. We ask that you would, just as Jesus has come alive and exited the tomb, that, that we also would come alive in the Spirit. We ask, Lord, this morning uh, for rain. We thank you, Lord, for what we have received. But we ask, Lord, um, not only for our gardens and our and our yards and at our homes, but also for for the crops of the farmers in the area. We ask, Lord, uh, that you would you would send your rain, Father. We. Uh, our hearts go out to uh, Milton John's family and uh, the Lopez family and the Christman family. And we ask, Lord, that you would bring your comfort to them. Would you provide them with, with peace that passes understanding? Help them to find you in, in the scope of, of this loss. 
I pray, Father, that um, that you would uh, provide care for and protection for our firefighters in our state that are that are continuing to fight fires. Lord, we pray for the the fires in in the uh, presidential election, and we ask, Lord, that you would uh, you would break through and that people would would gain sense and understanding. Wisdom, and that they would use that uh, in their governing of uh, both our state and our nation. Lord, we pray for Jane as she recovers from surgery. We ask, Lord, that you would bless her with strength and bring her to her feet again. Lord, for these and any unspoken prayer requests, we ask that you would uh, meet those needs according to your will and desire for those lives involved. Thank you, Lord, for walking with us day by day, moment by mo moment. We ask, Lord, that you would, you would be the thing that we seek after, that you would um, fill us with your spirit in such a way that that we would look to you to provide vision for us, for our lives. In this we ask, in Jesus' name, Amen. Would you turn to your, in your hymnals to number 451? Our hymn is, Be Thou My Vision. Let's sing the first verse. <coughs>
that uh, our purpose this morning is always to seek God's face. When we come to worship, that is always our purpose. So, uh, but this morning we particularly want to see Jesus. Yet while on this earth our sight is limited, 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says that we have limited sight of him, then we shall see him face to face. Although once we believe in Jesus, our Lord removes the veil from our spiritual eyes, allowing us to see him. Whereas outside of the faith, there is no spiritual vision whatsoever. All of this is to say, for those outside the faith, only the only way Jesus can be seen is when he makes himself visible. Remember Saul of Tarsus in the book of Acts, the persecutor of Christians, traveled to Damascus to flush out and arrest a cluster of Christians hiding there. Saul believed that Jesus was executed because he was an evil man, a heretic, misleading the people. Christians were continuing to teach his false message, quote-unquote, and so they needed to be dealt with. On the road to Damascus, the resurrected Jesus appeared to his enemy Saul and opened his spiritual eyes while blinding his physical eyes, sending him to carry the gospel to the Gentiles. And Jesus is doing this work again today among his enemies. Over the years I've read and heard stories of Christ revealing himself through dreams and visions from places like China and Africa and Europe and North America. And likely it has been happening all over the world. It just hasn't been widely published in some areas. And so, until the last year or so, I had not ever heard of it occurring among Muslims. Interesting. When researching this topic, I found a website called Isa Dreams, ISA Dreams, Dot org. I'll explain what ESA is here in a second. It's a website dedicated to inform the church how Jesus is at work today, opening the eyes of Muslims to the truth of Jesus. And I quote from their website, Dr. Dudley Woodbury is one of the key figures in modern missions to the Muslim world. He headed up the Muslim Studies Department at Fuller Theological Seminary in California. After reading an article that referred to Dr. Woodbury uh, doing some work, or some research in this area, we interviewed him and found out that he is also fascinated with Isa, which is Arabic, Arabic for Jesus, Isa dreams. The article indicated that around 40% of Muslim converts to Christianity mentioned a dream as being instrumental to their decision. He said that a graduate student had recently put all his data into a database and that he was way off his reckoning. It was really more like 70% of those Muslims who have come to faith in Jesus, it's because he came to them in a dream, 70%. He mentioned something that struck with, stuck with me. He said, in the West we don't dream. We've been taught not to dream. Middle Easterners and Easterners expect God to speak to them in dreams. And so, that's what this website said. But anyway, so there are two types of dreams in which Jesus reveals himself. The first is preparatory. Isa, Jesus, appears to invite them to follow him. He reveals to them in many cases that in the last 24 hours of his life, the part where Jesus is, is, uh, is arrested and persecuted, uh, beaten, and, uh, and crucified on the cross, and where he offers forgiveness and salvation. He then reveals himself as the risen Lord who reigns on high. He asks them not to die for him, 
but to live for Him. And this invitation grabs their attention in contrast, because it contrasts with the call of the jihadists to die for Allah. Muslims know of Jesus only as a prophet. Jesus refe reveals Himself to them as Savior. The second, so the first uh, type of dream is preparatory. It pre prepares them for salvation. And secondly, the second type of dream that Muslims have is an empowering type dream. Jesus appears in a dream to strengthen the believer for a task, uh, for a task, or to endure persecution. Muslims who convert to Christ often face retaliation from family and friends, and they need a strong faith. Uh, strong courage and, and confidence in Christ in order to um, endure sometimes intense persecution, even death. The risen Jesus is ever faithful, the faithful witness. Actively working today in the lands among the peoples that his bride, the church, struggles to reach with the message of the gospel. Why he wants his salvation extended to Muslims and Hindus, among other groups, who oppose him directly, we sometimes find it difficult to understand. It's a mystery to us. Isaiah 4.12 says that God's ways are not our ways, and God's thoughts are not our thoughts. There's mystery involved in God. We need to let that be okay. We find this mystery explained in our scripture passage today. Even then, John's testimony, his use of human language is stretched to its limits as he attempts to bear witness to this mystery of God. How does John explain the visions he's, he is seeing in human language when human language is so limited and God is so unlimited? He keeps his eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of his faith. Faith. He illuminates Christ as the one who we also must look to. Not having seen him ourselves, the task of believing in him is much more difficult than it is for those who have seen him. After he rose from the grave, Jesus appeared to the disciples. Our gospel reading today describes how Thomas was not there the first time Jesus appeared to them in the group. So when uh, the other disciples said that they said to Thomas that they had seen him, Thomas didn't believe. Just then, Jesus appeared to Thomas, inviting him to touch his hands and his side where his wounds were still clearly visible. And without touching Jesus, Thomas fell before him, addressing him as my Lord and my God. Jesus replied, you have seen me and believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and still believe. There is coming a day when unbelieving people will see him coming with the clouds of saints and mourn because they chose not to believe. There are those whom God has chosen who have not heard the testimony of the sacrifice and the resurrection of Christ. It is just it just may be that there is that the time is so short before his return that Jesus is ensuring the gaps are filled in where the church has yet to reach. In either case, he is at work in our world today. Look to Jesus, the central figure of uh, throughout this revelation passage, these five verses, Revelation 1 verses 4 through 8. It is, it is as though John is asking us, do you see him? This is how he describes Jesus. He is the one who gives us the ability to stand in his grace. He is the one who gives us the ability to live in his peace. He is the faithful witness. He is the firstborn of the dead. He is the ruler of the kings of the earth. He is the one who lives in us and looses us for, uh, or frees us from our sins through his shed blood. He is the source of our royal priesthood. He is the one who has the right to gather himself all glory and dominion forever. He is promised to come with the clouds of saints with great display of power and glory. He is at that time 
the one every eye shall see. He is the one who died for all humanity. He is the one at whose coming will cause all unbelieving peoples to mourn, all believing peoples to rejoice. He is the Almighty One of eternity past, present, and future. That's all that John is packing in to these five verses. The human language hardly can describe this. If nothing else has been written, then what is contained in these five verses about Jesus, it would stand unmatched as the most incomparable description of the, of the person and work of Christ found anywhere in Scripture. If at any time in your life you lose sight of Jesus, I encourage you to return to these five verses. Yes, you have my permission to mark up your Bible, underline these five verses, and let John restore this image of the Christ in your mind and in your spirit. We live in a unique time, a time when anyone can become a celebrity. On TV we have reality shows um, just all over the place, starring everyday people living ordinary lives or doing their ordinary work. We have Snapchat and Instagram and Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, uh, all kinds of social media that puffs, puff up us up, say that again, puff us up with popularity, or at least in our own minds, and tempt us to develop an addictive lust for likes and shares. In many cases, and some of you don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay. You're better off. <laughs> In many cases, um, people post photos and videos and philosophies with one goal in mind, to draw attention to themselves. To do whatever, I, I want to encourage you to do whatever you must do to avoid this temptation to be the subject of people's attention. Rather, in every aspect of your life, point others to Jesus, just as John the Apostle does this passage. If only the earth's billions would stop looking into a camera lens and seek, and seek the face of Christ by faith. But they are too busy glorifying their own image, too busy pursuing their own agendas to seek Him. This is one of the reasons why those of us who live by faith, not by sight, come and worship weekly. To be sure, that we keep our spiritual eyes on Jesus, we come every week. It is why we regularly celebrate communion, fixing our gaze on His body, the bread, and His blood, the wine. The elements of the Lord's table provide us with a visual sign that turns our eyes upon Jesus. I want to encourage you to sing with me as we prepare for communion. That Simple chorus, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light. United Methodist Church, we serve open communion to anyone who, is, who humbly repents of all sin and desires to follow Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus said, let the little children come to me, and so we welcome parents to bring their children to the altar to enjoy the fellowship meal of the Lord with us. We urge parents to teach your children what we are doing and why. If we confess our sins... God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, and not only our sins, but the sins of all the world. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, 
and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the conviction of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I give you a moment to uh, pray prayer, prayers of confession silently. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord for His unfailing love. And His wonderful deeds for humanity. For He satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. But He lifted the need out of their affliction. The upright see and rejoice. But all the wicked shut their mouths. Whoever is wise, let them heed these things. And consider the great love of the Lord. This is how much God loved the world. He gave His Son, His one and only Son. And this is why. So that no one need be destroyed. By believing in Him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending His Son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help, to put the world right again. Anyone who trusts in Him will be acquitted. Almighty God, in remembrance of Your loving acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in agreement with the Son's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. The Holy Spirit of God now rests on us, who are gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. For these elements have been duly consecrated and have become for us the body and blood of Christ, redeemed by His blood. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done. done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And we are not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory forever. Amen. body of Christ broken for you. The new covenant in Christ's blood poured out for the forgiveness of our sins.
O God of our salvation, we rejoice in your amazing deeds. By the resurrection of your Son, Jesus, you have opened the gate to eternal life. We are grateful for your gifts of forgiveness and a new start. Let the obedience of Christ, the Righteous One, become the chief cornerstone of our lives. Help us to use our spiritual gifts and monetary blessings for your glory. We dedicate ourselves and our offerings through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Good morning again. <laughs> again, got everybody's here today to share this hour of worship. We come to our announcements and uh, special recognitions today. Um, are there any announcements that people would like to bring forth at this time? Any of uh, the uh, things coming up? I've got a list of a few things. Okay. Some of the things we've got going on. Um, we do have somebody lined up to take care of the yard work uh, this summer. Uh, so the lawns will be mowed on Thursdays. And so we're going to work out the watering schedule, get all that those little details worked out. But that's taken care of. But we are asking, so we have a sign-up sheet in our text outside uh, for paying for the mowing and trimming. It's going to be the uh, $40 per week for, morning, for mowing and $10 per week for trimming and edging. Okay, so that's not too terribly bad. I'm sure it'll be continue to be a very nice looking lawn, but if you'd like to help contribute to this fund, again, you can just sign up outside on the calendar for that one. A couple of the meetings that we have coming up on this Wednesday, six, uh, on the 6th, at 6.30, the uh, Finance Committee is going to be meeting uh, here at the church, so if you're on that meeting, it's a very important one, uh, please be here. Uh, we do have the April Breeders taken care of. Uh, Joe is going to be doing that. And I think I read that we still need some readers for the month of May. So if you'd be willing. Oh, I told her I would. Got it done. Okay, that's good. Okay, so now we're looking ahead to June. So uh, I don't know how the summertime is looking, but uh, that will be coming up also. But thanks. Okay, and we also have the uh, trustee meeting next Sunday on the 10th. It's going to be right after church. Uh, so if you're a trustee member, be sure to. Uh, Hang around just a little bit longer uh, for the meeting right after church. 
And if you know some of the other members, uh, if you happen to see them, jot your memory and let them know. But I'm sure there'll be cards sent out to let, uh, to let them know. But we need to get our line of communication opened up and be sure our dialogue is going with everybody so everyone is aware of what's coming up. Ken? Yes? I will call everyone that's on the Finance Committee and the trustees to remind them. Good. Excellent. So, got that taken care of. Um, we are also in the final stages. I think it's pretty well done. There might be one little thing to add to it. We do have a, a, a job description for our administrative assistant in the office. Uh, we wanted to get that finalized before we really proceeded. And so now we, as soon as that is finalized, which should be very, very soon this week, we will be able to proceed with uh, the opportunity here at the church for administrative assistant that we'll be looking for. Other, anything else? Anybody come up with one? Well, on the uh, birthdays and anniversaries, we've got a list of that. Um, don't have any anniversaries listed for this week, and I don't think anybody is here that's got a birthday this week that we have listed. Have we missed anybody? Anybody got one coming up they want to admit to? Jim? I got a, a, a little prayer for me on... Uh, Tuesday, if I, I've got a bunch of kids coming in, I'm going to give them a tour. That's on Tuesday. Of this week? This week. Okay. Just give me the strength to do it, because I'm really looking forward to it. Well, good. We'll be praying for you on that, Jim, but uh, I know you well enough. When you have some kids in there to teach, you'll get the strength to do that, because that is your they passion. Come, they come from a school called Angles. Angles, I think it's out there close to Garden City. Yes, it is. Not too far from Englewood, where I taught for eight years. So oh. I'll probably, they probably, Emerson Shield is the one they called. I can't hear anybody on the dang phone, and they call them a place over here, so that's where I got all the message. Okay. Well, so Tuesday we'll be thinking about you. Okay. Good luck. Have fun with them. Yeah. Okay. Well, if nothing else, we'll continue on. I've got a special request. If I can get through it. Um, yesterday at Jones Fuel was a great, a good funeral. I really love that man. There's a song out there, which I'm not going to attempt to sing. It's a new song. If you haven't heard it, you got to get on the Look it up on the computer or something, just read the words. It's called Be Humble and Kind. To me, that represented Duncan in the utmost. I only knew him for the last 30 years, but I love the guy. Quality man that I would like to live my life emulating him. I also found out one of the songs we sang yesterday, and Joe told me this. One of his favorite songs, and I want to sing verse one of Hymn of Promise. It's on page 707. And we'll dedicate this to God.
fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.